Alright guys, welcome to your 54th tutorial, and in this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about the derived class constructors and deconstructors. Basically, I want to figure out this riddle. Whenever you have a constructor and a deconstructor in the mother class, does the daughter class also inherit that constructor? Well, it inherits everything else, so is that constructor and deconstructor included? Well, your short answer is no. It does not inherit the constructor and deconstructor from the mother class. Or does it? <laughs> I guess you're going to have to watch and find out. So let's go ahead and first make a constructor and a deconstructor in the mother class. So let's go ahead and remember in order to do that, just create a function with the same name, mother and tilde, mother for the deconstructor. Now let's go ahead and set this up. And I guess we'll build the constructor first, mother mother and all we're gonna have this constructor do is like see out I am the mother constructor explanation point emphasis on that crap and now let's go ahead and do the same thing let's copy this because I'm lazy and remember to add your tilde so that's the deconstructor and just write mother let's get rid of the I am the it's tacky she's a mom mother deconstructor so now we have a mother class that has a successful constructor and a deconstructor so now whenever we create a mother object like mother ma it should build the object so and I messed up something right here so mother mother let's see what I messed up oh here it is right here and L Ah, oh, you need that because end is not a keyword. So let's go ahead and run this again. And now whenever I create a mother object, you can see that the object gets created. I am the mother constructor. And whenever the program comes to an end, the object gets destroyed, mother deconstructor. So our mother object works as expected, I guess you could say. Um, whenever the object gets created, this runs. And whenever it gets destroyed, this runs. We already know what a constructor and deconstructor does. So now let's go ahead and build a daughter object. Now remember, at the beginning of this tutorial, I promised you guys that the mother constructor and deconstructor, even though the daughter is inheriting all the stuff from the mother, I promised you guys that it is not inheriting the constructor and deconstructor. So let's go ahead and build a daughter object if I can type daughter and we'll just name this like Dina because that's a nice name so let's go ahead and build and run this and see what we get whoa 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 Bucky Bucky I think you lied to me it said I'm the mother constructor I am the mother constructor Bucky you mofo you son of a bee you told me that the daughter is not inheriting the constructor from the mother class so why on earth would it run this constructor twice? Well, let's go ahead and actually build a daughter constructor and we'll see exactly what's going on. We'll see if I actually did lie or if I didn't. So in order to build a daughter constructor, let's go ahead and build daughter parentheses and also tilde daughter for the, whoa, what the heck is that? Escape, what the heck is that? I do not know how that got there. Anyways, let's go ahead and do that. And actually, instead of having to copy this, I'm just gonna, you guys should not do this by the way uh, just close your eyes for this part and just gonna change this to daughter and copy this always bad programming practice because you always usually mess up something but hopefully that should run just like that and now the mother class has its own unique constructor and deconstructor and the daughter class has its own constructor and deconstructor so now whenever I run this you're saying alright so you lied to me, obviously. The daughter did, in fact, inherit the mom's constructor. So now that it has its own constructor and deconstructor, I should see just two constructors and two deconstructors, run from the mom, one from the kid. So let's go ahead and build this in. What the heck is this crap? Six things popping up? All right, Bucky, you need to take a time out and explain to me what's going on. Well, in order to do that, I'll make it real simple for you guys. Just comment this out right here and run this program again. And now we see, once we just built this one daughter object, actually, let me go ahead and take this out completely. And now, X this out and build it and run it again. Now we see that even we built, even though we built one daughter object, it's still running that mother constructor. 
and the daughter constructor. So what the heck is going on, Bucky? All right. Now let me take a time out, take a deep breath, because I got some explaining to do. When I told you at the beginning of this tutorial that the daughter does not inherit the mother constructor, I wasn't lying. I was telling the truth. Even though the daughter is not inheriting the mother constructor, the mother constructor still runs. So basically, here is how your program works. Whenever you start this program, it says, all right, I have one daughter object that I need to make. So the very first thing I'm going to do before I do any of my own crap in this daughter class, the very first thing this program is going to do is it's going to invoke the base classes constructor. So it says, all right, daughter, you have one base class called mother. So let's go up to mother and we're going to in and we're going to invoke the mother constructor before we even do anything with the daughter. So that's why the very first thing we did was invoke the mother's constructor. And then after that, we were able to invoke the daughter's constructor. So basically, whenever you use a class, it sets up all its base classes before it does anything on its own class. So that's why whenever we run in this daughter object, it sets everything up on top of it before it, you know, did the daughter stuff. And another thing I want to point out, say you weren't only inheriting from a mother, but say there was a grandmother and a great grandmother, and there was a huge hierarchy, well, it's still the same thing. If that was the case, then the great grandmother would get done first, and then the grandmother, and then the mother, and then the daughter. Basically, the very top class is going to get done, um, the constructor is going to get finished executing first on the top most class. And this is because, like I said, Whenever you have a class that inherits from another class, it needs to set up the class above it in order to make sure everything is going to work inside it. So the daughter is going to say, all right, I need the mother in order to work. And the mother is going to say, all right, I need the grandma in order to work. And the grandma is going to say, all right, I need the great grandma in order to work. And that's the very top. So that's why the great grandmother it would be set up first. But in this case, we only have a mother and a daughter, a very simple explanation. So that's why the mother gets set up first, because in order for this daughter class to work, the mother class needs to be working first. So that is why the mother constructor gets called first. Like I said, the daughter class isn't inheriting, it's just setting it up. So that's why this mother constructor gets ran. Simple enough? So that's why the mother constructor gets ran, and then the daughter constructor gets ran. But then the daughter deconstructor gets called first, and then the mother deconstructor. That's kind of weird. You're saying, all right, if you're going to set this class up first, then you might as well destroy it first, right? But that's not the way it works. It goes mother, daughter, daughter, mother. It's kind of gets sandwiched in there. So here's what's happening with the rest of the program. Whenever an object gets destroyed, and remember, we only had one daughter object in this program, then here's what happens. Whenever an object gets destroyed, its deconstructor gets called. So Dina's deconstructor got called first and whenever your program saw that this deconstructor get called it sets off a chain of deconstructors that get called after it so if there were you know a huge family the daughter would get the daughter would die first and then the mother and then the grandma would die and then the great grandmother so it gets kind of built in reverse order then it dies but that's how it works so basically one last time whenever your first Say you had an object like the daughter. All of its base classes, the topmost base class, gets instantiated first. It takes care of the uppermost class first because it needs every class needs a class on top of it to work in order for that object to work. So that's why mother got called even though we weren't inheriting it. We needed to set it up before a daughter could get set up. Now whenever this program ends, the first thing to die is this daughter object. And once this daughter dies, it's going to set off a chain of death throughout the family. The mother's going to die, then the grandma's going to die, then great grandma's going to die, then Osama bin Laden's going to die, because that's what happened yesterday. And that's what day it is. <laughs> in, ca in case you guys are watching this like three years in the future, that's what day it is today. Uh, May 3rd, Osama bin Laden was declared dead yesterday, or two days ago, whenever they announced it. So anyways, I think I'll just end on that note, because I'm getting way off topic now, and I probably confused you guys enough. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and again, if you want to check out my tutorials in organized fashion, check them out on my website, they're all nice and laid out for you guys. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.